Buying a stylish or sporty looking car used to mean making a hefty compromise on practicality, but first came five door coupes with decent boots and space in the back, and now we have quite a few low roofed SUV coupes. The new Audi Q8 is one example of such a car, but is it a better luxury SUV than Land Rover's most road focused model yet, the Range Rover Velar? That's what we're going to find out in this video. But before we get started, please make sure that you're subscribed to our channel because we have loads of great new videos coming up. And don't forget, whatcar.com is the place to buy your next car and save some money in the process. So when you're on our website, go to the new car buying section and there you can find out exactly how much you can save online straight away without the need for any haggling. So first of all, what are these two cars? Well, they're both luxury SUVs, and in the Range Rover lineup, the Velar sits above the smaller Evoque, but below the bigger Range Rover Sport. You can see just by looking at this car that the Velar is clearly part of the Range Rover family. It's got some typical design traits like this U-shaped front grille and the wraparound headlights, as well as these blacked out window pillars back here. But it's also got some Velar specific design elements like these door handles, which when you lock the car, sit flush with the body here. But don't worry, because when you unlock it again, they come out. So that's the Velar and where it sits in Range Rover's lineup. But what about the Q8? Well, it is Audi's new flagship SUV, which means it sits at the top of the lineup, but it's actually based on the Q7. Now, if you're thinking it's bigger than the Q7, you're wrong, it's not. It's actually slightly shorter, although it is a little bit wider. So that wide stance, along with this aggressive front grille, gives it that kind of wide, angry squat stance on the road, which is quite interesting. And it only comes with massive wheels. So these are 21 inch wheels, but you can also get some 22 inch big boys as well. However, perhaps the most important styling element is this swooping coupe roof line that the Q8 gets, which makes it really distinctive in this class and helps it stand out too. But now you've had a look at both cars, we wanna know what do you think is the best looking luxury SUV on the market? Is it the Audi Q8, the Range Rover Velar, the Porsche Cayenne Coupe, or the Maserati Levante? Vote in our poll to let us know. We're gonna look at the interiors of these cars next, starting with the Q8. So you can see it's a really crisp and clean design, and it might be lacking in visual dynamism, shall we say, but it still feels like a proper luxury interior. And also, the materials and build quality are absolutely top notch throughout. And another huge plus is that every Q8 gets Audi's virtual cockpit system, which is these configurable dials behind the steering wheel right in front of the driver. And there's no other system that does it better. The graphics on the Q8's 10.1 inch infotainment touchscreen are pin sharp, and the menus are laid out in a logical manner, but the system isn't perfect. It's too easy to accidentally select something when you're scrolling, and we'd prefer physical shortcut buttons to icons. Sure, it's a good touchscreen, but we can't help but think the dial control system in older Audis is easier and safer to use on the move. There is loads of room up front, and because you have a nice high sitting position, you get a great view out of the front of both of these cars. However, in both cars, again, the view out the back isn't perfect because you've got the slim rear windscreens and also slim and narrowing rear windows too. However, both cars do get a reversing camera and front and rear parking sensors. Now, there is a little bit more room up front in the Q8, but if you are so tall that you struggle for room in the Velar, then I would be very interested to know what you look like. But apart from the space on offer, how else do they differ? Well, you still have a similar feeling of luxury in the Velar. These materials are an optional extra on these seat trims that we've got, and they look quite nice. And especially this material on the dash is really cool as well. But you do just get a slightly higher feeling of luxury sat in the Q8, and the materials are a little bit better as well. For example, you have some scratchy plastics up there. So generally, the fit and finish, and some of the materials are just a bit better on the Q8, but it's still impressive in the Velar. At 10 inches exactly, the Velar's touchscreen is fractionally smaller than the Q8's, and its graphics are impressively sharp but it's not as logically laid out or as responsive as the Q8 system. Again, it has shortcut icons, but they are annoyingly small. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard on both, which is great. This top screen can also be tilted electronically to get it at the best angle for the driver to view, which is handy. And it's great having these physical dials to control the aircon, off-road modes, and seat heating, depending on the menu screen you're on. 
there is loads of room in the back of both of these cars. However, the Q8 does offer significantly better legroom. This sloping roofline does mean that ultimately you don't have as much headroom as you do in a Q7, but you'd still have to be well over six foot tall to have a problem back here. The Q8 might have more legroom, but the Velar has more headroom. And also, as standard in the Velar, you get very slowly electrically reclining rear seats. The Q8 gets a manual equivalent, but both cars have 40-20-40 split folding seat backs as standard. You'll also be able to move the whole of the rear bench forwards or backwards, depending on whether you want to prioritise legroom or boot space. No matter where those seats are, the Velar has the bigger boot. You can fit more luggage into the boot of the Velar than you can in the Q8. But that's not the full story because the Velar has a slightly smaller boot opening compared to the Q8, as you can see, and it also has a higher load lip too. But still, the Velar overall is the more practical car. But what are both of these cars like to buy and own? Well, these are the key things that you need to know about buying and owning an Audi Q8 and Range Rover Velar. The Velar will hold its value better than the Q8, and this is partly why it's cheaper on a PCP finance deal. Factor in smaller insurance, servicing and fuel bills, and this Velar will be a lot cheaper to own over three years. So given that the Velar comes with more standard kit, it's actually relatively good value. Business users will need deep pockets whichever one they choose. Both of these cars cost more than £5,000 a year in benefit in kind tax, while monthly leasing rates are around the £800 mark. The Velar achieved a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. Although the Q8 hasn't been tested, the Q7 on which it's based scored even higher than the Velar for adult and child occupant protection. Although these two SUVs cost similar amounts to buy, there are some pretty big differences under the bonnet. With 237 brake horsepower from its twin turbo two litre diesel engine, the Velar isn't exactly malnourished, but the Q8 soundly trumps that with its three litre V6 diesel that gets a thumping 282 brake horsepower. You can get a V6 in the Velar, but it costs thousands more. In our testing, the Q8 covered 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.3 seconds, giving it a clear victory over the Velar, which did the same in 8.6 seconds. The Q8 doesn't just go like a hot hatch in a straight line, it would give one a surprise on a twisty road as well. It gets an adaptive air suspension system as standard, and it's incredible in its ability to keep this 2.2 ton SUV upright through corners. Grip is really impressive, and this steering is very accurate and nicely weighted, more so than in the Velar. And generally, the Q8 does just feel a lot more agile and capable. But let's put the performance things into perspective, because the Velar is still brisk enough for most people. It'll still get up to motorway speeds in a respectable time, and overtaking is still possible. But the Velar leans over pretty dramatically in corners, with little sense that its body movements are being controlled. And while air suspension is an option, it's not one that sharpens up the handling a great deal. So you can't make the most of the accurate steering. However, get to a less challenging stretch of road, and the Velar's standard squidgy suspension means that it's noticeably more comfortable the Q8, which tends to fidget around a little more. So the Velar is more comfortable, but it's noisier at all speeds. So on the motorway, there's a lot of wind noise and road roar. Plus, this diesel engine sounds a lot gruffer and nowhere near as sweet as the Q8s. Both automatic gearboxes shift gears smoothly enough, but they can both be a little hesitant, and they do get a bit frustrating if you want a quick burst of pace away at a roundabout or a traffic light. So this test has shown that these two cars have very different characters. The Velar is a comfortable cruiser, making every journey a relaxing experience. The Q8 has a firmer edge, but it also has handling that lives up to the promise of its sporty looks. The Velar is more affordable, better equipped, and more practical, but in this test of luxury SUVs, this specific model against that specific model, it's the Q8 that wins. It does so because it feels like a proper luxury item inside, and the effortless performance that it offers is far more in keeping with its sporty remit. Plus, it's comfy and roomy enough for the job. For much more on both of these cars, including our extended written reviews of them and every other new car on sale, make sure you go to whatcar.com. And remember, if you want to buy a new car, then that is the place to do that and save some money in the process. So on our website, head to the new car buying section, 
and there you can browse through our list of excellent deals from our trusted dealer network. And please subscribe to our channel because we've got loads more videos coming up. If you've enjoyed this one, give it a like, and if you've got any questions about these cars, then please leave a comment. Thank you.